What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do a smart repair on this vehicle. Now, just as a disclaimer, it's always best to clear coat the whole entire panel in its entirety, that way you have a good warranty. Well, when you work in a body shop, there's always going to be different types of repairs you're going to have to make, whether you like it or not, and it's cool to show you this little trick on this panel, so let's get right into it. Now, this quarter panel had a couple little dents and scratches that we fixed right here, and we used a black primer. Now, when we're assessing this car, we have two body lines. Now, usually I would like to pretty much come off of this body line and break it off since it's a shorter one, but we're gonna be using this one because we need a little bit more room, and it wraps all the way around, which can be a little bit tricky. I'm starting off of a 400 grit on my primer. I don't wanna to go too aggressive when doing a smart repair. I'd rather take a little bit more time. Plus, the repair I did here with the primer, it's fairly smooth, so I don't really need to get into it too hard. So I'll take my 400 grit, just use an X pattern to make sure that my primer is getting sanded evenly. And I'll go ahead and tape up the areas that I don't wanna sand. And also on this gas lid right here, we have a black and it's very easy for me to match, so we don't need to take color into it. So I'm ready to prep the rest of the panel. I'm gonna get my 330 seconds sander. It's a finishing sander, so it's gonna have much finer rotations and it's gonna allow my paint to lay on there that much nicer. I have my interface pad uh, from Eagle Abrasives and then I have a uh, K800 right here. Now the K800 is gonna cut like at the cutting speed of a K600, but it's gonna leave an 800 grit scratch. Okay, so you can see how we use our 800 grit now. We'll come back in the end and finish up some areas that are just a little bit shiny. Now this is where it helps to have a very good tool. It's all in the prep or else when we go to blend in that line, it's not gonna work well at all. So I have a hard interface pad, Ego Braces, and I have a K1000. I wouldn't go any finer than this. And the reason why you want a hard surface is because we wanna block this edge ever so slightly and we only wanna block underneath this body line. And what I mean by that is we're just letting the paper do the work. We're just guiding it. And we don't want to use too aggressive of a grit because the clear is not going to be able to fill it in. And plus the fact, this is where the two clears are going to transition together. Even at this edge right here, I mean, I know it looks silly, but it's easier to blend off an edge than to just have an open blend. So this might even only be a half of an inch but for the type of repair it is, guys, um, this is what you're gonna need to do. Then I'll just take off the paper, and then I have like an interface pad here, and I'll just use this to get the remaining in between. We wanna be extra careful. We don't wanna get a burn through on this edge. If we do, then we have to take the paint all the way up. It defeats the whole purpose of what a smart repair is. And it's really that easy and that quick. Now, we wouldn't be doing this on a customer car. Uh, this is one of our loaner vehicles, so we just wanted to make it look new again for our customers and make sure they're riding nice and clean. <laughs> so we have a degreaser here, and before I go ahead and um, bring it into the booth, I always like to degrease it. You don't want any silicone on the painted area or anywhere near uh, the area where you're burning in. That will completely ruin what you're doing. So make sure it's clean, clean, clean. I'll clean this off and then I'll let it dry overnight and tomorrow I'll pick it back up. Then I'll just get my gray scuff pad and I'm just looking to kind of clean it off a little bit. Now back here in the shop the next day and we're gonna go take the opportunity to use some wax and grease remover and just clean it before we mask it off. It's always a good idea to clean several times throughout the job. We don't know whose dirty hands have been on here. I don't know what it is about painted panels or prep panels, but people just like to come and touch your stuff 
when you're not looking or even right in front of your face. It's mostly mechanics that don't have any idea about what the effects of contamination are. But uh, we have it all cleaned up. We'll start off by taping up our gas lid once again. And we'll tape it up in the same fashion. Make sure you're using your wax and grease remover in this area, the wheel arc. That way your tape just sticks that much better. It doesn't come off while you're uh, painting. That's not good to have. So the key to pulling off this is having some soft edge foam masking tape. Now you can use regular tape and fold it back, but this just works so much more consistently. I went ahead with uh, a 13 millimeter. I prefer the smaller masking tape for this. And this is just what it looks like in a box, a whole bunch on a roll, and it's really just that thin. So the first place I'll use it is here in the door jam, um, where we want to leave like a nice soft edge. Essentially, we're doing the same thing here that we're doing on the body line, is we're creating a soft transition for our clear coat to meet. So you really need to pay attention right now to how I'm masking it because this will make or break a job. Essentially, we're gonna start off with the last piece of masking tape that will be on the car when we're all done. So we're gonna start off with having that about three or four inches above where our break off line is. Okay, so do you see this right here? This is our last piece of tape that will be on the car that our plastic will be stuck to. So let's put some plastic over the car now. All right, so we masked it up like any other project, but now we're gonna kind of pretty much cut along the line. So we're gonna be careful when we cut along this line. We don't wanna dig in too much. Just enough to cut the plastic. We have a brand new razor blade here. And then we'll go ahead along our door seam, along the tape that we back mask in our quarter. And then we'll just go ahead and taper up. All right, so the next step is we're gonna overlap with tape. This is inch and a quarter. Now this is gonna come in handy later on. We're gonna take our tape and fold it over. That way we have an edge that's easy to peel. And like once clear gets all over this, it's gonna be too tough. So we're good to go right there. We're gonna do one more. And on this one, we're gonna bring it just a touch above that body line, just a touch. Now, if we look closely, we can see we still have a little glossy area. So we're gonna refine it just a little bit more right before we put the foam tape. And once more, that's with our thousand grit right at the edge. We wanna make sure we have adhesion all the way to the point where the clear coat stops. And there we have it. The crispier the edge, the smoother, the cleaner the end job. Now, once more, I'm gonna clean. And you're gonna notice I'm cleaning before I put my foam edge. I don't want the uh, cleaner to absorb into that foam tape since it's somewhat porous. Now for the last step, our foam tape. It has a small area that has adhesive on it. So we wanna put that adhesive right at the edge. And we want this edge, the bottom edge, to be right between where the clear coat is and right between where the shiny part is. Do yourself a favor when using this tape. Do not stretch it. If you stretch it, it's gonna pull off. Then make sure it's on there nice and good. Now the last tip I'm gonna give you for this actual foam tape is on the edges. It's gonna wanna come off, so tape it to the car you don't want it to start coming off once you're painting. And we are totally set up. If you take a look at it, we don't see any of that clear coat edge, right, where it's shiny. And this is exactly what we want. 
So getting into the job, we can use any gun, but having more of a detail or a mini gun is gonna be a little bit better for the job. It's gonna control and contain that overspray much better because we don't want that spray to go too far. We wanna control what we're doing. So Segola sent over their mini extreme. I'm really excited to try it. So let's go ahead and unbox it. And it looks like it's made from Spain. So I've never been there, but if you're from Spain and you're watching, go ahead and leave a comment. And here it is. It is a minigun. It is probably on the bigger side of a minigun, which is good because I have kind of chunky hands. <laughs> but uh, there it is. It's right there. It comes with a little small cup as well, which is good. Doesn't look like it gets in the way too much. Uh, taking a look at it, it comes with a 1.3. Well, I asked for a 1.3. Like I tell you guys, that's a good general tip size to have. You're going to have your um, fluid knob here. And I'll start it wide open by backing it up, pulling the trigger, um, turning it in until it stops. And I know I'm wide open. And the fan we have at wide open for now. I have your air inlet, which you keep wide open. I have a regulator ready to go. And I'm using the PPS system, so I went ahead and got the S5 adapter that fits this particular paint gun. This is the PPS 2.0 system. Put our air cap on, and let's head into the booth. Now with the car in the booth, we're getting ready to spray. Now if you look, at, we have our black primer area. We do have a little burn through. It's not down to metal, it's just down to primer. And if we had more room, I'd probably seal it, but we really need to contain our paint as good as we can. We need to keep it below this line right here. Any paint that goes above this line, well, can cause issues with our transition into our clear coat. Now we want to keep our pressure really low. I don't really look at the number. I look at what the paint is doing. I'm gonna dial in my fluid a little bit. I don't want too much fluid coming out. And I'm just gonna brush it on. Very lightly, I'm just triggering it. I'm not full trigger, just a little bit. Okay, air's coming out now. If I pull a little bit more, paint comes out. You might say, wow, I'm going over it a lot, but barely any paint is coming out. Let's let this flash for a good five to 10 minutes. Now our second coat is gonna be very similar, just very, very light passes. I'm gonna leave it at that. Second coat, done. Now for my third and final coat, I'm gonna kind of come a little bit further, but still keep it low. You always say, get coverage plus one coat. And that's it. Leave it alone. It looks good. We don't need to mess with it anymore. We let this sit for a good half hour or so, and I have a tack rag in. Well, you see how smooth it is, right? I actually used an extra slow reducer in the paint. That's extra slow, and the finish is just beautiful. Clear hits it, it's gonna look like glass. So the first coat, I'm gonna bring it up here. I'm not gonna go over the line. The second coat, I'll bring it all the way to the top. And in real time, after that first coat laid on, super nice, really slick, really smooth. Uh, you see how I didn't take it up? I didn't take it over yet. That's what we want. We don't want to build up this edge. Let's let this flash for a good five minutes. On this second coat now, I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to move all the way up top. I'm going to completely overlap this foam tape. As soon as I'm done, you're going to see me pull off the tape and it should reveal a nice, clean edge. 
Now here's where all that taping that we did prior is gonna really pay off. Now remember how we folded over the edge? Look how easy it is. One more time. Take a look at how beautiful our edge is. All we have to do now is buff it when it's all dry. Now, I do not suggest using a blender on that edge. That edge is very sensitive. If you use a blender on that edge, it's going to take down all your clear coat. It's going to drip it off and it's very, very tough. So leave it alone. You're going to probably buff it anyways, you know, leave it alone. It already looks, you've already gotten to this point. All right. Like I said, black is one of the easiest to pull off, believe it or not. So we'll let this dry and then we'll assess what it looks like when it's all cured. So we let it dry overnight. We'll go ahead and unmask it and then we'll get uh, just a light buff going and this one will be good to go. So you want to be very, very, very fine with this. I'm going to go over this with a piece of 3000 grit right on the edge, barely, just to smooth out any sort of bumpiness, although it is pretty smooth already. We don't need to spend too much time on it. Just let the paper do the work. It's going to take away any of that little overspray here on the edge and any sort of crustiness. Uh, like I said, it's really smooth already. And you don't want to be sanding on this too much because remember, this is where your transition is. This is where the clear is the most thinnest, even on a regular vehicle without a burning. There's not a lot of clear that's on the edges. That's all we're gonna do right there. Now all we're gonna do is take our little Milwaukee buffer, gotta use the right tool for the job, and we're just gonna go over it with some compound. Then we'll use some wax and grease remover. This is going to remove any of those fillers that are in the compound and give us an idea of what it's really going to look like after it's been through the car wash, after it's been out in the sun, did we really buff it enough? And the way we find that out is by using this Astro Sunlight and this will show you what it's going to look like outside. And if I have any marks that are still, uh, you know, kind of dull, I want to go over it again, but it looks like it's good. We're going to move on to polishing stage now. And for the polishing stage, we're gonna treat this like it's a whole panel. This is a little bit dull from being in the sun for many years. And we just wanna make sure the transition between the two is seamless. Then we'll go over it with our fine swirl remover, step number three in the 3M process, the perfected process. And this is just gonna make everything look really, really vibrant and take away any of those marring scratches or anything like that. We'll give it a final wipe down and take a look at our work. Now we can go ahead with the reinstallation of our tail light. Now we'll go ahead and pop on our bumper cover. And our reflectors just clip in. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for this project. Now, guys, just a reminder, the best way to uh, finish a panel is to clear coat it all the way to where the panel ends for a good factory warranty. Now, I will tell you though, working in a body shop, you're gonna have to do some things that are a little bit different. It's good to have the knowledge to be able to pull off 
jobs just like this. So watch the video a couple times, apply the knowledge, maybe try it on something else. Guys, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and head down to the link right here if you want to get some merchandise. And hey, in the meantime, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one. Let's check it out.